Alrighty. Um, welcome and thank you for joining me today. My name is Kimberly and I work for Ambulance Victoria. Today I'm just going to present to you a 10 minute webinar on our Shocktober initiative, which focuses on bystander CPR. And today we were covering the three steps, call, push and shock. Thousands of Victorians suffer an out of hospital cardiac arrest every year. A cardiac arrest occurs when the heart suddenly stops. Immediate action is critical. For every minute without life-saving intervention, a person's chance of surviving decreases rapidly. Tragically, only one in 10 people survive. However, when a bystander performs CPR, a person is twice as likely to survive. And if an automated external defibrillator or AED is also used, the survival rate dramatically increases. That's why it is vital for bystanders to act quickly. Cardiac arrest can happen to anyone, anywhere, and at any time. It can happen at any age, health or fitness level, and often without any symptoms. That's why it's important that everyone knows what to do should they witness a cardiac arrest. Saving lives is a team effort and you are a vital part of that team. I was playing soccer and I felt really dizzy. My legs just gave out from under me. I was turning blue and I had no pulse. And then I had a cardiac arrest. They tried to revive me and they couldn't. Someone got a defib. And started CPR. The defibrillator restarted my heart. If those guys hadn't been there, or if they hadn't been able to get a defib, I wouldn't have survived, that's for sure. It took teamwork to save the lives of these three Victorians who all had a cardiac arrest without any warning. Together, we can save lives. If someone is unconscious and not breathing normally or not at all, it's time to act. Seconds count. That's why it's up to all of us to learn how to save a life in three simple steps. Call, push, shock. So step one is to call. If someone's unconscious and not breathing normally, call triple zero immediately. The call taker is here to support you with life-saving instructions. So put your phone down and on loudspeaker. First, you need to tell the call taker your exact location. If you don't know the exact address, look for key landmarks. Be aware that the call taker will dispatch an ambulance and continue to ask questions and support you until the paramedics arrive. The second step is to push. We want you to push hard and push fast. If someone is unconscious and not breathing normally, the call taker will ask you to perform CPR. Even if after today you forget how to do CPR, the call taker will tell you what to do. Continue until the paramedics tell you to stop. If there is another bystander, ask them to take over the CPR when you tire. Keeping hands on the chest, continue to rotate when each person tires until the paramedics arrive. So I'll just walk you through how we like you to position yourself for efficient CPR. So we want you to kneel up straight with your knees to the person's chest. Knees should be, a wide as, um, should be as wide as the shoulders width apart. Put the heel of your hand in the middle of the chest right between the nipples. Now place your other hand on top and lock your fingers. Try and keep your fingers off the chest. Lean over the chest with your arms straight and elbows locked and having your shoulders above your hands. So now for the rate, it's um, actually quite fast. It's around two pushes or compressions per second. Um, you can count this in by having someone else count for you, going one, two, three, four, or you can sing a song in your head to keep the rhythm. Some people use row, row, row your boat, or staying alive by the Bee Gees. And we also want you to push a third of the depth of the chest and let it rise completely before pushing down again. All right, the second step is to push. Push hard, push fast. And there's no need for you to do mouth to mouth anymore. Just use your hands. If there's someone else with you, take it in turns doing CPR. Swap every two minutes as it's really tiring. You'll need to continue these compressions until we arrive and take over. Here's a few things to keep in mind as you're doing compressions. Put the person on the floor if possible, not a couch or bed. Kneel next to their chest, with your knees about shoulder width apart. Put the heel of your hand in the middle of the chest, directly between the nipples. Place your other hand on top 
and lock your fingers together like this. Try and keep your fingers off the chest. This will keep your weight on the right part of your hand. Lean over the chest with your arms straight and elbows locked. Push down one third of the depth of the chest and let the chest rise back up before pushing down again. To get the right speed, you can use the song Staying Alive by the Bee Gees or Row 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 Your Boat or even Baby Shark as a reference. Basically, you want to be doing about two compressions per second. Join along with me. Row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream. Don't let fear get in the way. Try and stay calm. Do what you can and remember that when it comes to CPR, any CPR is better than no CPR. All right, so that takes us to the third and final step, which is shock. If an AED is available, ask the person who has arrived at the scene with the AED to open it and follow the instructions while CPR is continued. When a person is unconscious and not breathing normally, an AED can be used to shock the heart back to a normal rhythm or to restart the heart. AEDs are very safe and easy to use, so easy that anybody can use them, even if they haven't used one before. All you need to do is turn it on and follow the instructions. There is no training necessary. All right, we've covered how to call and push. Now let's tackle the shock component. When we say shock, we're talking about an AED or a defib machine. AEDs are in a lot of shopping centres, schools and public places. Knowing where your nearest AED is, is super important. There are many types of AEDs in the community. This is just one variety, but they're all just as easy to use. Just keep a lookout for this sign. So, if you're nearby to one, or someone can grab one for you, here's what to do. Turn it on and follow the instructions. That's it. AEDs are totally safe for anyone to use. They analyse the patient's heart and only deliver a shock when needed. You don't need training to use one and there's an automated voice that will tell you what to do. Some of the things it'll tell you are to remove their top, Remove clothes from patient's chest. Where to put the pads. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. When to move away from the patient. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. And when to keep doing compressions. No shock advised. Begin CPR. Alrighty, so that completes the three steps of CPR. I'm now just going to introduce you guys to Good Sam. So while you, were attend while you were doing CPR on your friend, family member or stranger and the ambulance is on its way, someone may come to you and offer to help or bring an AED. Most likely, they are a Good Sam responder. Good Sam is another Ambulance Victoria initiative. It's a life-saving app that connects adults to people nearby who are in cardiac arrest. The app is connect connected to triple zero and allows Ambulance Victoria to alert local Good Sam responders to offer assistance in the first critical minutes while the ambulance is on its way. Good Sam is now open to any adult who is confident and willing to perform CPR and use an AED. At different stages throughout COVID restrictions, we had to pause the Good Sam program. However, the program is now open and accepting registrations for all adults over 18 who feel confident performing hands-only CPR and using an AED. To sign up for Good Sam initiative, participants can use the QR code on the PowerPoint right here um, on the screen or visit the Heart Restarter website. Once registered, to become a Good Sam responder, participants will receive a verification email. Once verified, they can download the app in Google Play or the Apple Store, log in, and they will now be ready to respond to alerts. This is just the AED registration. So if you have, are at a workplace or you are at a sporting facility and you know they have an AED, um, it's great to know their location. It's also great to encourage them to register their AED so that it can be available for public use so that we can help improve the outcomes of all members in the community. I'll just answer a couple questions that we probably haven't covered in this webinar so far. So are there any legal issues to consider when performing CPR? 
So if you are a bystander performing CPR on someone with a cardiac arrest, then you are covered under the Good Samaritan Act. So there, um, there shouldn't be anything to um, consider there. Um, can I break the patient's ribs while performing compressions? Unfortunately, this is a common side effect of performing CPR. However, at the point when the patient's heart is not beating, they are considered dead. So if we can bring them back a couple broken ribs, you know, they're not going to be complaining about that. What things can I do to help the paramedics before they get there? Two really great things that can help us is if you can have the position, um, the patient positioned lying flat on the floor or the ground, if possible, and to also ensure that we have easy access to them, as well as a lot of space around them, because there's going to be a few of us and we're all going to bring in equipment. Um, so the more space we have around the patient, the better. If you can't do this, however, that's okay. It's just a bonus if you can. Alrighty. Thank you so much for listening to this, guys. I hope everyone got a little something out of it and you all feel a bit more confident if you were to come across someone having a cardiac arrest. All right. I wish you all um, have a great day. Bye.